So by now, you've probably downloaded your Trix uh, novice form from the website and have looked it over. And you see there's a lot of tricks on there that are probably behaviors you've already done with your dog. We're going to review those first. And um, th they're really important because they are the foundation for some of the, the higher level tricks later on. And I see we have a little helper here. This is Spumoni. <laughs> and he's three years old and he's going to be one of my models. He's one of the fluffer nutters. And um, Tigger is my cat who likes to interfere and get involved in whatever we're doing. So he may make some guest appearances periodically. So we're going to start out with our first trick for the, uh, this first week of our trick class um, with a sit. And I know you're probably thinking that you have a sit with your dog already, at least most people do. Um, but we're going to use the sit to teach you a little bit about marker training. And I use a clicker. To teach, um, to teach behaviors. You're welcome to use a clicker. If you don't feel comfortable with a clicker, then I advise you to use a, a marker word of some type. Um, a short, precise word. A lot of people kind of say good boy or good girl when their dog does something they like, but that's really long. Um, and it's not the precision, you lose a little bit of precision there using a word like that. So we want to use a really short word. Um, good all by itself would be fine. And it's going to be something you're going to say, try to say anyway, with the same intonation every time. Because what ha tends to happen with a word is we put a lot of um, emotion in it. So some days we'll say good, and some days we'll say good, and some days we'll say good. And what we want with our marker is for it to sound the same to the dog every time. And that's where the benefit of the clicker is. So um, if you have a clicker, it's a good time to just play around with it. You're at home, you're just working on your own in your house, so if you make some mistakes, that's okay. Um, no one's there to, to notice. Um, basically, the way it works is you think of your clicker as a camera, and it's taking a picture of your dog doing the behavior you asked or that you want at the moment it happens. And so you click the clicker, that's the shutter, and then you reach for your treat and you deliver the treat. So the click comes to me, to the dog, a treat is coming. So anytime you click, you must follow it up with a treat. So um, whatever he's going to do, I can click, then I move my hand and reach for the treat. You don't want to have that treat in your hand when you're clicking your dog because this is what will happen. So if I have food in my hand and I'm waiting for him to do something, he's only focused on the food and he's not paying any attention at all to what I want him to do. Um, you know, if I'm going to give him a hand signal or if I'm going to give him a verbal signal, he's only focused on what that hand is doing with the food in it. So I don't want that. I want him to listen to what I want and I want him to pay attention. So the food goes away until after I click or after I use my marker word. I do use a marker word myself. I do say yes is my marker word. It's, it's not a great marker word, but that's, um, that's how I've been doing it for years. So that's, that's what I use. Um, so again, if you want to come up with something a little more original, that's, that would probably be a better choice. Okay, so we're going to start with sit, and as you can see, he's sitting right now all on his own. He's been rewarded for sitting a lot. So I'm going to use a treat and just throw it on the ground so that he goes to get that, and I'm going to wait and click on when his butt hits the ground and toss a treat. And all we're doing is teaching him that the sit is getting him the click. Now, for a dog who doesn't know any, uh, how, what a clicker is all about, but he does know sit, this is going to help you to teach the dog what the clicker means. Because every time he hears it, he's going to sit. Or he's going to repeat that behavior with, that he was doing when he heard it. As he starts to make that association, oh, every time I hear that sound, I get a treat. <laughs> so that's what he's going to do. That's what we're doing. So I'm trying to keep my body language fairly still. Um, there he sat on me and I wasn't paying attention. Um, I'm going to keep my body language still so that he doesn't misinterpret my own movements as part of the cue. Good boy. Good boy. And I just wait for him to do it. So as, as he, we call this capturing, we're capturing a sit. And since he knows a sit, I can put, um, I can put, usually what would happen next is we'd probably put a hand signal to it. Um, I might, this is my hand signal for sit. And lots of people do different hand signals. You can use whatever you already use. 
Good boy. Actually, he doesn't even need one. He's, um, he's raring to go. Good boy. All right. And if we're going to pretend that he doesn't know a verbal for this, um, if we want to teach him a word, we can, we can put the word with it. Um, so this is how it would work to teach your dog the word. If he's used to doing a lure, some people use a lure to teach sit, especially with little puppies, because they do that. And of course, the puppy follows the lure with his nose. Whoops, I dropped it. You get that. So he follows it with his nose, and then you would release it. The problem with using a lure is your dog will get dependent on it very, very quickly. So you want to get rid of it. Um, as soon as you can, because if it's just if you just have food in front of their face, that's all they really are thinking about. So you want them to actually start to think about what he's doing. So I would get rid of the lure um, with the dog in you know hopefully a handful of repetitions and that's it. So now the next step to in a dog who didn't know sit um, would be to make that same motion, pretending I have a treat, and doing that. Um, so that's where I get the hand signal from that I use for sit is from doing that similar motion. So he knows that that, it means sit as well. Good boy, good boy. All right. So now I want to put a word to it. And obviously he knows it, so this is going to go very, very quickly. I'm going to say the word. I'm going to say the word, S-I-T, and then do the motion. I don't want to do them at the same time because I want him to pay attention to the cues I give. And if I'm doing the thing he already knows, he's not going to pay attention to anything else I do or say. So I want him, I want him to hear the word and begin to process that in his mind. So I'm going <laughs> to... Come on. Come on. There you go. Sit. Good boy. So I managed to get it in there very quickly. But um, he's pretty fast. Here, go get your treat. Go. Go get it. Good boy. Spumoni, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Once you, your dog is really... Sit is really um, putting those together very quickly. Eliminate that gesture and see if they do know the word. Sit, good boy. So now I'm taking that gesture out completely. Sit, good boy. That's a good boy. So you can still praise your dog. Sit, but you really don't want to praise while you're clicking. Your clicker is speaking for you. Sit. 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 And that's pretty much the progression when you're adding a verbal cue to any of your cues and your tricks. Good boy. Take a break. There you go. Take a break. Um, is to add the new cue first, which is the word in most cases, the familiar visual cue right after, not at the same time, but right after, and then um, eventually they'll put, they'll predict, okay, whenever that word is said, then that gesture happens, and I know that gesture means to do this, and I get my treat. So they'll start, they'll start responding to just the word, and that's what we want to do. So that is how you can teach your dog to sit, either with a lure, with the food in front of their face, or you can, <laughs> you can teach them by capturing it, just um, whenever, when it happens, mark it and treat it. Good boy. You ready? High five. Good boy. Good boy.